Welcome to Powercraft TV, where the creative soul gets to have a lot of fun. I'm Shahar Boyayan, your host for today. And on today's show, we are going to introduce you to a line of products that can revolutionize your artist's life, because you can use these textile harness to create sculptures, garden sculptures. We are also going to be talking to Beverly Oliwa from Edmonton, Canada. She's going to talk a little bit about her artist life. And of course, she brought a very cool tutorial of the pretty ladies. You're going to love her. And a best tip by the end of the show, so just to, to improve your entrepreneurial skills, okay? So let's get started. <music> You're going to see during the tutorial with Beverly that she's using a few products. So she will be using the Power Pole Black, which is a textile hardener. She will show you how to use that. Uh, she will be using wrappers, which are a very soft material. And again, you're going to see what they do for your sculpture. And of course, power colors that gives that life to the piece because you can color them in different ways. Very, very cool. Later, I'm going to tell you how to obtain this product and also a very special offer that you really should pay attention to that. But I'm really excited to have Beverly here. So let's chat with her. Hi, Beverly. How are you doing today? I am fantastic, Shahar. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you excited about today and the tutorial? I sure am. I was saying to Jack, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm <laughs> like ready to rumble. <laughs> this is about changing the world. That's what it's about. Tell me a little bit about how you got started with art. Okay. Well, I'm, I think that I've always been a creative being and I've always loved making things, doing things, sewing things. And I used to work for the federal government mm. as an income collector. Oh. <laughs> talk, about, <laughs> talk about 180 degree change. And I landed up having to leave on stress leave because I love uh -huh. my job that much. <laughs> Can you and, imagine? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it was awful, Shahar. It was absolutely awful. Um, but one of the things that I did while I was off was I got a train to be a seamstress. And I absolutely loved, number one, I love being an op entrepreneur and I love managing my own day. I loved working with the fabric and that, but it was very hard work. It was extremely hard work, very hard on my body. And quite honestly, what my hands could and it wasn't um, something that wasn't a long-lived career, let's put it that way. And while I was doing that, I landed up taking a class on how to make a fairy with a t-shirt. Oh. And it totally piqued my interest. The pictures like is like, how can that be a t-shirt? So I took a class with my friend. I absolutely loved it. I played with it for quite some time, just on my own, kind of learning my own things with it. And then one day, as luck would have it, I landed up walking across a lady at, at an event and she was teaching people how to become certified instructors and teaching people how to do this art. And at that point in time, we were in the discussion of, should we sell our house? Should we stay? Should we go? This is such a big house, all that kind of stuff. And so all of a sudden that was like, that was the answer to my solution. So I met her in December, January 1st, we started renovating our, my basement to get it ready to be a studio. And by the end of February, I had become certified and was teaching my first class. That's how oh, fast. <laughs> I like that, lightning fast. <laughs> Oh my gosh, when I think about it in retrospect, it just, it blows my mind away. But when things are supposed to happen, that's what happens is things yes. fall into place um, type of stuff is what I've discovered. And then, so I started teaching. I loved being a teacher. How did I know that I could be such a good teacher? But I also loved working with the product. And what was happening is, is these pieces were starting to overtake my basement. My husband's like, what are we going to do with all this stuff? And so I started doing events and people started buying my products. And so then what's happened is through, in well, I'm 67 now. In seven years, I've evolved from being an instructor 
to being a full-fledged artist. That's so so it's, cool. That's it's such a, a cool, story. cool story. Yes, it is a great story. <laughs> I mean, let's think, let's think about some keywords that she mentioned here. And I would write that down because they will become very important for you later. I'm sure of that. So she started talking about Power Paul, the product that she got in touch with. She talked about giving classes. Actually, there is one keyword that she didn't mention, but she made it very clear. Multiple streams of income, classes, uh, selling pieces, right? Uh, doing art shows, many, many, many ways that, that she's doing that. Life changing. Yes, because look, seven years ago, there was a major change in her life. And look what really became. She got a passion for something, developed that passion, right? And turned that into a whole new lifestyle. So you should write those down because they are very important. Now, Beverly, talk to me about the tutorial that you have prepared for them. Oh, I love this tutorial because I, I'm just going to bring one up here. Yeah, um, look at that. These, yeah, they're, they're just... These, um, through my career, I've landed up using this class. Um, I've had opportunities to do some events where I've only had two hours to teach a class. And these are truly a great appetizer. Yes. You get a chance to you get a chance to experience the product. You do some very basic things and you get to know whether you're going to like this or not. And you can totally see, you can see the potential of what's happening with this. And that's, that's really what an introductory class is, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it sets you up. It just, it, 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 you know, it's, you know, when you have a great appetizer, it's just like, mm, that was awesome. I want more. <laughs> yeah. I like appetizer and I like experimenting too. Right? Because yeah, when we get yeah. to experiment with new things, the ideas flow. It's good for our mind. And now, you, you mentioned you gave us classes, and this is a great beginner's project. But do they sell? Oh, absolutely. I had, I probably, in preparation for doing those classes, I probably had a half a dozen, maybe even almost a dozen of them. And I literally had none left. Wow. Um, so I had to make up a bunch. And so what, I think I've got six, seven of them here now. So I've got them the coming tutorial. for upcoming cool. events here um, type of stuff. So absolutely, they do sell. That's good. So what do you say we watch part number one for this tutorial? Sounds great, right. Shahars. Hi, everybody out there at Curious Mondo and for everybody around the world. My name is Bev Oliva and I am a certified instructor with Paverpool in Canada. I'm here in Edmonton. And today I am going to take us back to the very, very basics of working with Powerpole and teach you a few really fun techniques to create what I call my pretty ladies. It's a class that I've had great success teaching and it's what I like to consider an appetizer, an appetizer to everything Powerpole. Because in this little instruction class that I'm going to teach you, you will learn a basic foundation. So if you're somebody new here, this is going to be very, very valuable for you. Because it'll just give you a good foundation of what Powerpole is all about. If you are an experienced person, it might be a great reminder of some of the things that you forgot way back when. Or some of us have like jumped to the advanced classes versus starting with the beginner class. And so hopefully we'll cover some of the basic foundation things there as well too. And for those of you who are an instructor or thinking about becoming an instructor, I think you're going to find this really valuable. I love this particular piece because number one, the supplies that we need to make it are extremely minimal low cost, and it's a class that you can get done in two hours. And I have to thank Annette Holbrook from uh, Orange Wire in uh, Chilliwack, who basically gave this class to me when we were doing the Creative Stitches show. And I believe it came from Maryland in Australia, actually. So it's been recycled a few times. I've added on my own little touch to it, and I'm here to share it with you today. So. How, let, how do we begin? Let's start off with just what, what we are going to need. What I've gone and done 
is made a foundation and these are these are cement solo cups i poured cement into a solo cup they're four inches tall and then i went and dipped a jiffy cloth in that in the powder pull and twisted it around. I love the, the the jiffy cloth because number one, it manipulated really easily and it didn't take a lot of medium. So that was really wonderful. We are going to need our ever popular tin foil and masking tape. And for the hardwire supplies, we are going to need electrical wire okay so the 1420 the gauge that you would just normally use in the house we're going to need that and for tools we are going to just i'm going to maybe use a spoon i have a little hammer old scissors and some cutting um, a pair of wire cutters and we're going to need I've got them packaged in these great little kits. So if you're teaching a class with this, I'll show that to you in a little bit, okay? But if we're teaching a class, I like to kind of bundle everything all up so I can just give everybody a package. And this works out really, really easily. So in this package, I've got my one inch styrofoam ball. Well, yeah, I think that's a one inch. And I have that electrical wire and it is 24 inches. I'm gonna give you the dimensions of everything now, so grab your pen and paper. 24 inches of wire. We're gonna do a quarter of a wrapper, a power wrapper. We are going to do a strip of t-shirting that is two inches long, or 20 inches long, I've got it folded in, in double here. 20 inches long and two inches wide. And this, honestly, I used up scraps, scraps of my t-shirt that were in my bin that I just used up. And then we have a small square that is three by three, and I've cut a slit in it, and I've got the stretch going around this way. So three by three with a slit. And then I've got a, a three by four piece of t-shirting. And then I've got the bigger piece of t-shirting that is eight by eight. So as you can see, it's a very minimal list. So it's a very cost effective kit that we can put together. And now as I'm working on this, what I really want the people who aspire to be an instructor or are an instructor to really pay attention about the, I'm gonna call them booking seeds for someone to book a class, okay? And and this really is, like we're gonna cover some of the basic te techniques that we use, but we are really, this is just simply an introductory offer. And that's what's so really cool about this is that it really, Gives, uh, it gives you an appetizer. It, it's just like an appetizer. And so that's why I love it. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started here. So I'm taking that 24 inch of wire and I'm gonna find the middle. I'm just folding it in half. I'm taking that little one inch styrofoam ball. I'm gonna tuck that in there. And then I'm just gonna kind of wrap that in there. There we go. And twisting it one, two, three times. I've started kind of using a longer neck than I would typically use, okay? And so now we've got this, white on white, sorry about that. Yeah, let's just leave it, white on white. Okay, and so now I need a little piece of bamboo and I need it to be two inches. So that's gonna be my hip and it's gonna be two inches. So a little bamboo skewer. There we go. And I wanna place that bamboo, and so my, my um, 
my shoulders are going to be two inches wide as well. And I do recommend checking just so that you've got the right proportions happening. So that was six and a half centimeters here. Six and a half, and then I need five and a half. And we're gonna bend that up. Oops. What we're gonna do first is tape these two together at the end because it just makes it easier to manipulate them both at the same time. We're gonna tape that here. So as you're working, as you're, when I did this class, because we only had two, and I still had that fold there, so I could totally see where that was. As I taught this class, basically I gave them in the kit this form already constructed. So all of those materials that I told you earlier, and there's the form that has been built. So then that gave us lots of time in the two hour class to be able to construct this and play with it, okay? So that is the base of where we're going. And as you can see, I've got this all measured so that it works really, really well on here. The legs are long enough, it's wide enough, all that kind of wonderful stuff. Can you change the proportions? Absolutely. So you can go up or down, type the press button. For the first one, I would totally just land up using the proportions. Now, for the tin foil, what I'm gonna land up doing now is just using some of this tin foil to fill in this cavity, okay? So this, as you're teaching the class, gives your students an opportunity to sculpt with tin foil. How many people sculpt with tin foil? So it gives them an opportunity to experience it. And as you can see, I've just, you know, I had that little bit in the middle there, and now I'm just working that. I'm condensing it down. I'm gonna twist it. Now, of course, when we are doing the full-size beginner class, we, we make a much more complicated, oh, see, look at how that got a little bit of a twist to the feet, and I like that. That's great, and see how that bamboo skewer just kind of keeps that in place up there. There we go. So that's one layer there. I like to beef the body up just a little bit more than that. You know, I bunched up a bunch of tin foil there and I was going to have a lump. I don't want that. So I'll, I'll unfold that. There, that's just a little bit better, a little bit more substantial. And I'm really condensing it. Really condensing it. There we go. And I want that the edge of the body to just be really. There we go. See how quick that was? Now we're going to need a piece to the head about a hand width and what I like to do and again in, in the full class we'll totally teach you how to sculpt a complete face from scratch but in here because we've only got two hours we only have two hours ladies um, so I'm just basically going to just do this really quickly and I'm basically just looking for something that resembles a head and I still want to have a chin okay so I'm grabbing the neck and I got the head happening the chin happening there there we go and you're going to notice I'm really just condensing that very slowly so that I have more control if you just go then you get a big lump and there's no movement left. Where this way I can still manipulate it and get it to where I wanna go. See, that's kind of come up over there, but I'm not worried about that at all. There we go. Now, in a beginner class, we will actually go over all of the proportions that a person would need 
and what all the proportions look like. But because we only have two hours, you're going to hear me say that a lot today, ladies. But um, I still want to give you a sense of how much fun this is. And he, even with just some very rudimentary skills, we're going to be able to create a really fun piece. Now, this is one of my little tips. Um, I like to use the back of the spoon to kind of manipulate a shape and and condense it. I find number one is just because I can do the rolling with it and on the face I like the face to be smooth regardless of where they are but there we go we have a little blank spot right there see how hard that was to fix I just in case you missed it, I just grabbed a little piece of tin foil and added it on. So there, that is the basic body shape. So we're, we're creating our armature. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some boobs. And I like to start off with two pieces of tin foil that are the same size. There we go, that one should be just a touch bigger, but we'll be all right. There, and that compensated part. And now what we're gonna do is condense them into a ball. So there we go. Condensed it into a ball. And the boobs are going to go there. So as you can see, that's just way too big, but that's okay. So it's not really a ball. The, the back side is flat because it's going on to that base. There we go. Now I kind of, that one's just a little bit bigger yet. There we go. Ta -da. About the same size. Now what we're going to do is use the table to round it off and condense the size and smooth it out. We can use our fingers too. I hope I didn't make too big of a piece of tin foil here. She's gonna be big chested. Yeah, won't be the first time that's happened for me, right? Whoops, I hear my husband coming in. So if you hear some noise in the background. Hi, I'm recording. That's why I can't get a hold of you. Yes, that's why you can't get a hold of me, dear. <laughs> wow, it always impresses me. A little aluminum foil, some wire, and the sculpture is starting. There's so much more that you need to see. But again, she will start using more and more these products, and I want to introduce them to you. So, for example, Paverpol is a line of textile hardeners. I'm going to show you a video later on exactly how it looks like when the, the, the pot is open. But it's amazing because you can create indoor sculptures as well as outdoor sculptures. There is no other product in the market that allows you to get fabric, t-shirts, any type of uh, textiles, and then turn them into garden sculptures. Just think about the possibilities for what you can do with this. So this is the main one that she's using on this tutorial. And of course, the power wrappers that you're going to see in a second, actually, how it works and the color. How do you get them? Well, you have to find a distributor in the country that you're in. So what I'm about to tell you about the offer that we have today is exclusive to the US, okay? Usually, if you were to buy this, you would pay about $27 for PowerPole, $18 for the wrappers, and $12 for the power callers, right? A total of about $58. You know how much you can get this for today? Yes. This is the first time you're going to be hearing this today. You can get the three of them for $44.99. $44.99. How cool is that? So keep that in mind. And how do you do that? It's showing right on your screen how you can get this product in the US. But if you are in another country, we are also showing you a website that you should go to. We'll talk more about this later. Now, Beverly, you mentioned during the tutorial several times about giving classes. I, I believe this is a very important thing for you. What do you like about giving classes? 
Oh, you know what? I I can totally see in our local market, because we've not been able to give classes in this last little bit, um, how it's affecting business. Okay. Yes. Um, and the cool thing is, is people get an op number one, people when they see what you've done, they think it, it's they think it's so hard and so complicated, but truly it's not. And and when you have an instructor who will take you through step by step each each pro each part of the process, what happens is is that when they come at the end of it, and even in this class, it's a short two hour class, and they come with a really cool piece of art that's one of a kind. And the gratification that you can see on their faces is just so amazing. That's and, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. And so, and then of course, when you start them with something simple like this and they get some success with it, then they're willing to take on the next piece, which would be the beginner piece, and then the intermediate, and then off they go to the heron. And, and never before ends. you know it, yes. <laughs> Keeps the wheel turning, turning. And we have three more keywords for you to put down, right? For example, gratification. Yes, when we accomplish something, that feeling is really amazing to us. Fulfillment, and she also mentioned success, right? These are just a few things that you get from either teaching a class or taking a class, right? Now, Beverly, I'm really excited for you to get your hands dirty. I love when you have your hands dirty because beauty is coming out of that. <laughs> so let's watch the part number two of this tutorial. Okay, so had to do with my husband there. There, I've got that one condensed down. It's probably still just a little bit big, but I find they get... Um, they do kind of get lost in the system type of stuff. So having them a little bit exaggerated is just fine. Oh, not too bad. Let's just tighten that up a little bit more. Now, if you're really stuck for tightening some stuff up, the trusty hammer is always great. You'll see I'm just kind of, oh, that's looking like a boob. There we go. That's where we're going to put them. And they're, like I say, they're a little bit big and it looks really weird right now, but I'll show you how we're going to fix that up. And so what I, what I found the last time I made one of these was that if I just put a double sided piece of tape on there, that'll hold that in place. Now I'm just kind of plunking these on, of course, when we do the actual beginner class. And just so you know that I do have a basic beginner class in my inventory at Curious Mondo. So if you've done one of these and you're like, man, that's so much fun, I really would love to do more. Um, I highly recommend the basic beginner class. We have a whole stable of wonderful, wonderful instructors with uh, Curious Mondo, but I always think it's important to start at the beginning, get your foundation down, and then you can totally, um, totally, you know, move on to some of the really elaborate classes that we have available there. So now what I'm doing is I'm just filling in the, above the chest so that that looks just a little bit more natural. Okay, there we go. In my basic beginner class, we have a whole boobs and butt section. There. So that's basically our form that has been done. And so now what we're going to do is tape it all down and and basically i'm just taping it to secure everything in place one of the other reasons and again in the beginner class when you're doing arms and legs and boobs and butts and you just really want to kind of see better what it is you've constructed then of course um Covering everything in tinfoil really helps so that you can see what it is that you've done. But we only have two hours here. So um, when I when I teach this class, I, I only allot two hours. And so I have to make it really basic and easily and simple. But I also want to give them a real taste of creating an armature, of just taking such a humble piece of supplies and creating a really fun piece of art. 
So I'm not spending a whole lot of time being smooth because this particular piece gets all covered in t-shirting. So there's no sense in really panicking about how smooth everything is. I'm not even gonna worry about covering that because honestly, it just doesn't matter. And basically I'm just trying to, number one, tighten up the tin foil. Number two, and just get a real good sense of what it is that I have created here. Now, when you're using masking tape, I do highly recommend getting the good masking tape because um, one of the things that I like to do is um, have three or four pieces on the run at the same time. And if you use cheap masking tape, by the time you get back to it, lots of chances are is that it will be letting loose. And when you use good masking tape, that's not an issue. There we go. So as you can see, this armature works up really, really quickly. Even with building the armature, it's very quick. And then on our next phase, what I will show you is how to wrap it in the t-shirting. Give me half a minute here and we'll get her face done. And again, I'm not, if I'm doing a, um, a masterpiece, <laughs> I was looking for the right word. If I'm doing a masterpiece, then I'm certainly, you know, taking more time to make sure that everything is just and beyond perfection, basically. But for me, my, the purpose of this class is an introductory offer. It's to show you how fun it is to work with PowerPole and how easy and how even with just a little bit of time and some really humble supplies, we can make a really fun piece of art. Okay, one of the things I didn't talk about was the PowerPole medium and our list of supplies. This has been sitting and you're gonna notice it's got a gray film, a film on top. So you do have to stir it because the product does settle. And as you stir it, you're gonna see those white lines. So you just stir it until those white lines get all sucked into the power pole. So the power pole is, um, I like to call it a liquid glue that has activators and hardeners in it that when you use it with a natural fiber, it will create a, a statue, a, a piece that is safe to be outdoors. All right, so I work with the white cotton t-shirt because when you're working with white, you really get to see whether you have missed a spot or not. Can we use other colors? Absolutely. But when I'm teaching a class, I love to use white just because of that. See, that little corner got missed. And if it wasn't such a stark contrast, oh, and there we go, another one. You would totally miss that. So this is the three by four square that we are going to do. We're going to do her head first. Now, in the beginner class, it because your head is just shaped a little bit differently and more realistically, you can basically have just a little bit more success than just this little one. All right, there we go. I'm just going to... There, so what I've done is I've taken the piece at an angle. I've got that dipped on her chest. I can hold on to it there. And I do have the curl coming up towards me, so it's easy enough for me to grab. And then what I'm gonna do is just wrap that really tight around her neck and bring that, oh, that worked out really good today. Sometimes it doesn't. There. So my goal is to have the front of her face looking lovely and the back 
because we're going to have it covered with hair or a hat or in this particular piece we're going to end up using the um, quarter of the power wrapper to and I'm just kind of laying just kind of laying the things down here to make it as smooth as possible so it's like putting a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle together and the back honestly it's going to get covered up so it doesn't matter it really doesn't matter you can take it down and knock it down flat like that knock it down flat like that or if you want if you're thinking you're going to put a little bit of a a notch in her hair, which I think I might do that today. I'm going to leave that kind of just sticking up. Oh. There we go. There. So the front is looking really good. The back is the back. Okay, so that's that piece. The next piece we want is this one that has the slit in it. And you're going to notice as well, too, that I am just um, dipping a little bit at a time and I'm massaging it in. I try to keep over the bucket that I'm working with so that I don't have it flying everywhere because the product is the most expensive part of the project. And I tend to be fairly hmm, economical <laughs> with the product. And my golden rule of thumb, if you've ever taken any of my classes, is if you dip it, you use it. All right, so now I've taken that bib. And so over the boob part here, it's curling under, but around the neck here, it's curling up. And that's really where I want to have a little bit more control. So just make sure you've got it centered over her. And you want to make sure that you've got everything sealed in. Chances of this, well, mind you, maybe this piece would go outside in the garden. And you just have to make sure that no weather can get in. Now, what's going to happen is if I peel that over there, it's going to come to the front. And I really want the front to be nice and clean. And you're going to notice as well, too, especially when you use a stretchy fabric, like a t-shirt, the, the medium does make, help it stretch a bit. So that really allows you to get it nice and tight and form-fitting. Just poke that down a little bit. There we go. Now... This is one of the things that I do all the time. Even it's been what, seven years that I've been using this product. And this is when I have a strip of t-shirting that needs to be dipped, this is how I do it. So you're gonna notice when you stretch the fabric, it has a curl. I'm gonna, yeah, there you go. You can totally see the curl. So what I do is I take and I have the curl facing me. And now what I do is I dip one end and the curl's facing me. And then what I do is I roll it away. This just really lets us, number one, be super efficient with the product so that it's not, there we go, uh, we're not wasting anything. And the other thing is, is because the curl's coming towards me, it's really easy to unfurl it and make sure that it's all been saturated. Now, with regards to saturating, you want to make sure that it's thoroughly saturated, but you don't want to have a lot of extra in there. The reason why is because number one, it would be flying everywhere. And number two, you'll end up, you know, um, wasting a lot of it and and honestly it's not easier to work with when it's super saturated it's actually more challenging to work with it it takes a uh, longer time to dry and it's just it's messy extremely messy messier than that <laughs> oh goodness so this is that 20 inch piece that is two inches wide and 20 inches long 
And I'm just, see how I'm, I'm just getting it all condensed into this nice little roll. And it's not flying everywhere. So it's helping me keep nice and tidy with this. And if you are teaching a class, um, mind you now, I guess we, ha we have to give more space in between the students, but I know I've had, you know, some classes where I've got the students pretty close to each other. And so being able to have them be, um, you know, condensed is really helpful. See there, you can see where I missed a spot. There we go. There we go. There we go. This is a really, really quick, easy project. And, um, it's just so surprising. I know anytime I've taught it, it's been so surprising to see the results that happen. The, tr the thing is, if you are teaching this to a larger class, though, I find by giving them a pre-pack of materials, <clears throat> it keeps them on the straight and narrow in that they can't, um, you know, they can't start pulling it apart and having two legs instead of the one leg because there's not enough material to do that. And as well, because the time that I've taught this class, it was billeted as a two hour class. And the only reason, the only way you can get that done in two hours is if you keep everybody on the straight and narrow and keep them on task. Wow, it's getting really exciting, right? It's getting really exciting. We are getting to touch that product. Things are moving on. And you, you saw already, because she showed on screen the end result, right, of that beautiful lady. And think about how many you can make. Well, why not give them as gifts as well? If they, these are the, your first pieces, put it around. Or if you have an end of the year bazaar or art show, yeah, take them. People are going to say, how did you do this? This is always the very first reaction they have. But don't forget that in order to make them you will need this amazing product so for this tutorial you will need the power pole black the wrappers and the power collars and I mentioned before if you were to buy this in the US you would pay around $58 for the three of them well if you take action today you click on the button that you see below the video you are going to be able to get them all three of them for $44.99 and it's a metal power collar the antique bronze you're going to love it you're going to love it so how to take action just need to click on that button and you can get the three of them. We will ship that to you right away in the U.S. only. You see at the bottom of the screen the website that you can go also to check all the PowerPro products here in the U.S. as well as if you are in another country. There's a website there for you. Yes, we're not going to leave anybody out of this amazing opportunity here. So make sure you get that today. Actually, I know you're very excited because you're starting to see Beverly manipulate the product, but you're thinking, but is it liquid? How does it do? So let's watch a very quick video that Danielle has prepared for you about PowerPoll. Hi, I'm Danielle with Curious Mondo, and today we're going to be going over a product known as PowerPoll. Peverpol is a fabric hardener, also known as a textile hardener. So I'm going to show you what Peverpol looks like and a little bit of how to use it. So as you can see, Peverpol is a liquid. So this is the Peverpol bronze and I'm going to stir it up. And then we're going to demonstrate how to make it useful. So we're going to take a Peverpol wrapper which is a fine gauze. I'm going to stretch it out a little bit and then I'm going to just dip it in the Paverpol. I'm going to wring that out. Now when Paverpol dries, it actually becomes a hard and immobile uh, surface texture. So it's useful for so many different things. So what I'm gonna do, because Paverpahal does dry quickly, is you can just kind of let that air dry a little bit. Or if you need to speed that up a little bit, you can also wipe off your hands. And then we take a dryer.
And then what we're going to do is attach it to a natural product. There you go. And that is the start of our Paverpal product. Wow, isn't that amazing? How many things can you create with this product? I really love it, I really love it. So Beverly, we are about to go to the last part of this tutorial. And you know, you start dealing with the product. At the very first time I saw you, because you were my very first introduction to PowerPoint, I thought this is very, very messy, probably makes the whole house a mess, And but it's not, right? <laughs> you hear that a lot, right? <laughs> Um, you know what? It's uh, what what I have discovered because when I had my studio and all that space, it got very messy. But now that I live in an apartment and I don't have as much room, I'm not that messy with it. So, um, <laughs> and I don't I don't have a special sink like I had in my studio. I just have my kitchen sink. But I have figured out a way to make it work. Uh -huh. um, the the toxics uh -huh. is um, non. It's non-toxic, it's environmentally friendly. You just have to make sure you don't put it down the sink. And so do you have to set up some special ways of working with it? Yeah, like a bucket of water and a strainer to pour the water through before you throw it down the drain. But other than that, it's not messy. That's I find it. it very therapeutic, actually. <laughs> yes, I found my setup as well. Uh, and now I can see it's not messy at all. It's just need to plan ahead, right? And let's yeah. write the last keyword for today, environmentally friendly. That's a very important one. It's a non-toxic product, so you're safe to use it and you're safe around children as well, correct? Correct. It's got the, what is it, the ACMI approval, which is a very hard designation to get um, in the United States, and it does have that seal on it, so it, it's absolutely safe for children to use as well, so because of that seal. So you do have some of the beautiful ladies uh, beside you. Can, can you show that again? And I know at the end of the tutorial you will highlight all of them, but show me yeah, one. Yeah. I am excited to see it. This is one in the, with the antique bronze on it as well, too. And the other thing I just wanted to let people know that even without the offer, if you sell one of these, you'll get your money all back. Yeah, tell, tell me how much you would sell one of these. Um, I've been selling them for about $60, $65, and people are paying that no problem. They're actually nice. a great little piece to have on my on my table because I like to have that little bit of a lower end product in case they don't have two or three or four hundred dollars to put on something. Then these are definitely, um, you know, something they're again for our clients. They're a great appetizer introduction to your work as well, too. That's and very good. Um, I'll sell them for sixty dollars. So out of that bucket, you will end up getting many many pieces the first one pays for it the rest are all pure profit and you're talking about the small <laughs> container right 500 grams you could take yep, you could absolutely. get several of these so it it, it yeah oh, it goes yeah. a lot yes 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 do you have another one to yeah. show us i do let me show you this is this is kind of a fun one so this one would be a little bit harder to do the, to the introductory class with, but I just wanted to show people possibilities of what people can do. And I landed up using some cro crochet cotton. So again, just an opportunity to talk about recycling, reusing, creating another story with a treasure that people have, you know, because everybody's got those cotton doilies that grandma made, but nobody ever sees them anymore. So this oh, is another so then opportunity. We have three more keywords, recycling, repurposing, and keeping legacies alive, right? Because grandma's doily should be in a place where people can actually admire them. Very good, Beverly. So let's watch uh, uh, part number three. Let's do it. So now with this piece, you can see at the back, and you see uh, there's pieces I've missed with the tinfoil, but that's okay. And the front, it's just going to make good sense for me to start at the back here. And again, I've got the curl coming towards me. Oh, nope. There. See? 
See if I'm curl if I'm doing it like this, the curl is not coming towards me and I have to dig in there to unfurl it. So having the curl up and towards you really does make life much simpler. See? See how much easier that works to do that. Now I'm taking it at an angle. Oh, okay, now what I'm gonna do here, because we've got the two, you know, the two separate breasts instead of one uniboob breast. Oh, my scissors. Oh, I'm gonna end up cutting it more than I want to. I want just a little notch in there. I just did a little notch right in there so that it lay down. And then we're going to land up doing another notch right here once I've got that laid down. And again, see that curl is coming up? Makes it really easy for me to unfurl it. If you remember anything today, that's the golden rule. Now, this top part is basically all going to be covered up by her dress that we're doing. So I'm not worrying about having any texture in there. But as we're going down towards the legs, I'm going to want some texture. So you're going to notice that I'm starting to pull it. Yeah, there you go. You can see it. And then you can see where we're getting those little ripples and folds in the fabric. I am overlapping just a little bit so that it'll stick to each other and not give a gap for the weather to get in. And I find generally it's just really lovely to go at a bit of an angle. And I'm just, I'm stretching it. I'm hoping that's translating on the camera. If you stretch it nice and tight like this as well too, it just helps your work be a little bit neater. I know sometimes when I've been um, judging pieces for the certification class in the United States, I can totally tell where they just need a bit more practice on wrapping. So now I'm at, I'm at the end. I do have a piece left over here that I'm not going to waste by putting it all there. So what I'm going to do is just come past the end of the structure and then I'm cutting it off in the same angle that this is running and now I've got this little tab that I can fold over top, seal it all in and now I'm going to wrap that around and I call that the burrito roll. So there we are, we've got her all sealed up, there's no gaps anywhere. And I'm going to put this aside because my golden rule is if you dip it, you have to use it. <clears throat> now, I've got this bigger piece that I am going to get dipped. And how we dip a bigger piece is to put one corner in and saturate it. I'm almost at the point where my hands should be washed off. But I know that this is kind of, I'm really close to finishing. So, but. Okay, I'm going to have to because I'm leaving crumbs. I'm leaving crumbs on this piece. So, when I'm washing my hands, I, I always just have a bucket of water beside me. And I just kind of take the big stuff off. There we go, that's better. And then make sure you dry your hands really well as well too so that if you're the type of person that doesn't like to get dirty um, I'm afraid <laughs> this probably isn't your project to do but I don't mind this at all and again like I'm not I'm not getting it all super super cleaned up okay oh but I better pull that away because that'll land up that'll land up in there okay Let's continue on. A lesson I didn't even mean on teaching. <laughs> I 
All right, so once we get into these big pieces, once you've got that piece saturated, I keep that in my hand. And then I just keep, keep saturating. Oh, all the ladies are outside. We still have good weather here. <laughs> I have no idea what they're talking about today. <laughs> I think they're talking politics. In Alberta, we have our city a civic election, and then we also have the national uh, election as well, too. So it's been pretty heavy with all the politics lately. Okay, there we go. So as you can see, I just saturated, put it in my hand. Now I've got this big piece all saturated. You're going to notice it's not drippy, drippy wet. And now what we're going to do is figure out how we're going to dress her. And so today, I think what I want to do is, well, let's do it off the shoulder. And I'm going to take one corner. And again, I'm pulling it so that I can see those folds that have happened. I like that. And oh, that's looking great. There we go. And now what we're going to do is just pull that over. Now this, this part is totally where you get to have, oh, see this, this happens to me all the time when I start working on pieces is that it just kind of starts unfolding to be something spectacular. I love, for me, it's all about the texture and having the lovely folds, having these crisp edges that are going to be sticking out. Oh, there we go. Isn't that going to be fun? That's going to be great. Now I've got my base here and what we're going to do. Oh, perfect. I love it. That turned out really good. You're going to notice I didn't even dry fit it. I just went with it because, especially with the t-shirting, when you dry fit and then all of a sudden, oh, look at how cute is that. I'll do a nice little video after where we can do the tour around it when we've got it all done. Now, I had this one piece left over. And I think what would be really cute today is just kind of use that like a headscarf, but I want more folds in it. And I had the curl going down, or if I have the curl going up, I can see I'm stretching it. Oh, there we go. That's better. There we go. How cute is that? Now I've got this quarter of the Pava wrapper. Now the Pava wrappers are fantastic. They're like a, a woven cotton, but it's a bit stretchy. And there's so many fun things you can do about that. If you look at the inventory of classes within Curious Mondo, you're going to see there's some really cool examples on how to use this. If you're brand new to working with Power Bowl, I highly recommend, if I can be so bold as to, the, the beginner class that I have because it goes into all the body proportions. Oh, there we go. Look at how fun is that? I just kind of want a little bit of a, I want a little bit of something like that on there, but I'm really liking how that looks. So I don't want to mess that up. 
maybe if we do it. This power wrapper stretches as well too. Nope, nope. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna basically continue on from where the other one finished off. Oh, there we go. That's cute. And this is where you can use a bamboo skewer as well too, just to kind of help you place things a little bit. There we go. And yes, I do recycle my bamboo skewers and reuse them a lot. And eventually this one will get cut up and be put in. Oh, there we go. How fun is that? I'm just gonna tuck the back part in a little bit. There we go. Excellent. Okay, here she is. I promised I would just give you a good front view of her. And I'm just, as she's drying and setting up, I'm just totally gonna keep coming back and checking that, but look at how cute is that? You're gonna notice I have taken a piece of plastic because powder pull doesn't stick to plastic just to keep her legs from swinging out so that she will set up this way. And I'll be, I'll be futzing with this just to get all of that loveliness happening as she's drying. The back looks really great. Her turban looks cute. Just kind of tuck things in. I'm even liking how that just little extra drape fell down. And there we go. Now we need to let her set up and I will highlight her. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, that you got an opportunity to have a little taste, a little taste of what you can do with Power Pole. So this is the gal that we did in the class. And I'm just gonna have a little quick fashion show of my pretty ladies to show you just some of the possibilities of what we can do. These are all been done with just that basic little kit that I talked about at the beginning. And as you can see, the possibilities really are endless. This one is done in the antique bronze. I love how that one turned out. <laughs> I love doing this kind of stuff. And then I have, this one has, this one is a pregnant mama, okay? And uh, as you can see, again, and this is just the basic, 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 but you could totally, if you wanted to, if this was something that you allocated a bit more time to, you could add, land up adding on some crochet cottons. You could make wings for it for your girls as well too. Turn them into fairies. They totally can just be so many different things. And this is my little Southern Belle. All right, so that's Beva Alawa. I am with Curious Mondo. I am one of the instructors there. And I do really have a lovely inventory of classes. The Basic Beginner is an amazing class. If this is your first experience with Power Pull, then I know that you will really, really appreciate the foundation that you can get built with that beginner class. I have my hair in class as well too, which has been very, very popular as has been the rooster, but there's quite a collection of classes there. So do take, take a quick look at it. And you can find me on Facebook at Beverly Lynn Miller Olawa. And my business page is uh, Creative Fire uh, Artist Bev Olawa on Facebook. My website's horribly out of date, but it is creativefirestudio.ca. Thank you very much for watching and we'll talk to you soon. Wow, Beverly, they are amazing. And I love when you put the colors, how 
Wow, you just have a ton of very cool sculptures out there. Very, very cool. What do you think inspires you to create this type of pieces? Oh my gosh. Uh, sometimes I have an idea in my head and sometimes my pieces have their own idea. <laughs> Lots of times when I'm making something, it'll just say, nope, I want to sit like this as opposed to this. <laughs> So Good. I need to pay attention while I'm making them um, type of thing. Sometimes I'll see, I'll see a vision of just something and I'm like, oh, that would be really cool. Remember seeing a, a little a spray of a water fountain thing going on one time and I, I made my uh, water, I called her water, and it was just kind of, to me, it was that representation of that. So, and sometimes when I'm making things, things will evolve even just as I'm making them as well. I, I get inspiration all around on me all the time that's so cool so cool so you know always when we have a lot of people watching there are people that are already uh, familiar with the product and they're already creating things so they get excited with your tutorial and they go make it but there are always those that oh, I'm not sure I'm not sure what's your final words to them this is the great piece to start with. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's yeah. just, it's, it's such a simple piece to do and it really doesn't matter. Like I, there, because I've probably have taught this to about 60 ladies already. And sometimes it's just amazing to see the results that come out and, and you'll never know unless you try it. This could spark something inside your heart that's just been waiting for that little bit flame to the fan type of stuff <laughs> of just what's been missing in your life, okay? <laughs> that's, that's very good. Beverly, thank you so much for being here with us. I really enjoyed the tutorial. I actually cannot wait to get home and give it some try. I'm, I'm hooked into Power Power by now. And you know me, we've known each other for a couple of years. Uh, it took me a while. At the beginning, I, I was not sure. I was not sure. But once I started making and seeing all the possibilities, my life has changed as well. Thank you for so much for telling your story as an artist. And I hope you are back here at Private Craft very soon. Thank you so much, Shahar, for the invitation again. And uh, like you said before, we're pioneers in this, and I absolutely love it. And I adore everything that you do with this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And guys, you saw this. You saw this tutorial, and I bet you have tons of ideas right now. But I, I hope you did pay attention to Beverly's story, right? Because like she said, she had a job, not very happy at that job, at an age that most people do not start over again. But she said, you know what? I'm going to start over again. But this time, this time, she decided to go for something that was igniting her passion, that could give a different purpose for her life. And that's where she got with Power Paul and everything happens because nothing happens by coincidence, right? You're not watching this by coincidence. And her life changed and her, uh, her business changed as well. And now she has the lifestyle that she always wanted. Think about this. Now, this opens the door for you to start this project, right? So the Power Paul Black, the wrappers, and the Power Colors. Today, in the US only, a special offer of 44 99 you're saving a lot just look at the screen and you're going to see how much you're saving by getting the three of the three products today there is the website for you to get here in the u.s as well as for you to take a look at the distributors in your country if you're not here but this offer is valid only for Powercraft TV. You don't want to miss this. You're really saving a lot. And like she said, the Power Paw alone will allow you to make several of these beautiful ladies. So it goes a long way, and it really does. The Power Wrappers, oh, they go forever, actually, right? Unless you make a very big sculpture. And same thing with the Power Colors. Uh, this powder is, is stitches to the to the T-shirt, to the fibers that you're going to be using. Amazing, 44 99 if you take action, action today, tomorrow is gone. So don't miss that. And when we come back, I'm going to talk to you about a business tip. Well, as artists, we always like to be in our studio making things. That's really when joy is there, right? We just love doing that. But, you know, there's always the possibility for you to turn that into a side business or even a full business like Beverly did, right? So it's important for you to start thinking about entrepreneurial skills that you can acquire to implement them and be successful in what you do. Because I know, like me, you grew up with things like, oh, art, 
art doesn't make uh, money, uh, it's not serious if you're going to study art and things like that, which, you know, are false concepts. You can make very successful business out of art, but you have to have those skills in place. So let me introduce you to one of them. In business, we say one effort, multiple results. What does that mean? That you work hard in one thing, but you make that thing generate multiple results. So you might be thinking, about, yeah, but how do I do that if I'm sculpting a pretty lady like Beverly just did? Well, very easy. See, she first sculpted the piece. That piece can be sold. It can be sold in bazaars, in, in galleries, in art walks. There are multiple ways for you to sell a piece of art, online, for example. But then, once you created that piece, you may think, you know what, I could teach this, right? Well, you can start giving classes. PowerPoint offers you a certification for you to be able to teach classes. Well, you then start getting that same effort that you put into this lady into teaching other people. And you can do that multiple times, right? And you can have two people in your home, you can have six, you can have however many your space allows that, and you're making a second revenue of income with the same piece that you created. But guess what? You can either record that in-person class that you're doing, or you can record separate in another date, just you showing them how to make that sculpture. And then you created a third way of making money out of that. Now, when you create a very beautiful, beautiful piece, right, you might want to take a gorgeous picture. And it goes beyond you promoting them on social media. You get that gorgeous picture, turn that into a card, a greeting card, and you sell for, to people a set of greeting cards with the picture of that first uh, sculpture that you created. So the effort that you put into that becomes a piece of art that you can sell multiple times because you can sell hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cards. A lot of artists do that. You can also print that and sell as a wall piece for people to put in their, in their home. You can make a big uh, picture out of that and sell that. And there are many more ways. The idea here is for you to understand that every time you put effort into something, it should be generating multiple results. It gets a lot easier, right? Especially because as an artist, you're not going to be creating production line. You are not going to be creating 10 of these beautiful ladies every single day. That's not why you are an artist, right? You are not a factory. So the process of creation and creating beautiful pieces and putting your ideas into fruition, they take time. So it tends not to be the, if it's the only way to, to sell, it gets a little complicated if you're trying to make a business out of this. If you're okay selling every now and then, no problem. So always think one effort, multiple results, and then you're going to be very successful with the PowerPoint line. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I sure had a lot of fun and I'm really grateful that you're here with me. Now, next week, we will have another amazing artist, another amazing tutorial, and we are actually going to start our first series of holiday items that you can create with the PowerPoint line. You're going to love this. We are going to give you lots of ideas. So do join me next week for more Pepper Craft TV. Thank you.